All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live on the air with one of the, in my personal opinion, one of the biggest and best hip hop duos on the rise right here. We got Loose Cannons, we got Bootha and Sin Q. How you doing? How you guys doing this evening? Oh man, we're doing great, man. And uh, man, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that glorious intro, brother. <laughs> yeah, we 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 are extremely humbled by by the presentation that you just did, man. We appreciate you um, having us tonight. Hey, man, I got to say first and foremost, man, I love your guys' work, man. I mean, the, the music you guys bring to the table is absolutely phenomenal, man. Like, you guys really keep that real rugged, raw hip-hop sound alive, man. I, I, when listening to your music, man, you could really tell that you guys are actually all for the hip-hop culture. Oh, no doubt, brother. Like, I mean, day one, you know what I'm saying, even before um, me and this guy on the phone uh, with us, even hooked up and became loose cannons. That you know, what I'm saying that's what that was. It was it was all for the culture. It was all about the culture because that's what we came up in. And you know, what I'm saying that we'll we'll, we'll definitely continue to uh to uh, keep that torch. You know, what I'm saying keep that torch flaming, keep that torch going because that's, at the end of the day, that's that's all it's really about is the culture. Yeah, we were we were raised in it since uh, D, uh Run DMC. All the way, all the way up to the new generation. We study everything we can study, um, soak it all in, and try our best to display that in our music. So we appreciate the love, man. And I gotta say, man, you could tell that Run DMC really influenced you guys, man. Like you guys' flow, your delivery, and I, I gotta say as well, man, I'm really actually ha like happy to hear they actually finally found out and solved the case pertaining to Jam Master J, man. You know, unfortunately, that won't bring the man back, but at least the family gets some closure. Yeah, true that. No true statement has been said. If anything else, when something like that happens, that's all we can ever ask for is an answer to the question, why? You know, so I, I, I'm glad they did that as well. But I got to ask both of you guys, man, like what inspired each of you guys individ individually, sorry, to pursue a career in music? Because you guys are obviously two different artists, but you guys come together and, and form such amazing chemistry. Um, man, I, you know what I'm saying, just growing up in the house with my mom, uh, my step-pop, uh, my uncle, uh, my grandma, cousins, they all played a certain, they were all into a certain genre of music. I'm talking about what's coming from the mid-70s all the way up into, you know, they were all in, they were all digging a certain type of music, so for me, I got to hear all those genres of music from R&B, uh, classic soul music to classic rock to um, the country music to jazz music. I just I was just introduced 80s pop. I was introduced to a whole lot of that music. Bro. So when hip hop emerged, it was like, oh, so you can do it like this. And that's when, when I heard, when I heard the message, that's the first, and I always tell folks this, when I heard the message, that was the song that let me know that, like, yeah, this is what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, I've, um, I've always been an entertainer. I've always, I danced around the Michael Jackson, I moonwalked just like every other little kid. You know what I mean? I sung songs, I was an artist, so I drew a lot, so I had to find a outlet to express my talents and music fit me so much more so than sports because, you know, once you knee or your back go out, that's pretty much it. So I had to flip it, man, and I fell in love with music, entertainment, and art. And then me and my brother, we hooked up, and it's been like the chemistry has been off the charts ever since. So I would never uh, regret anything or look back. And also, man, you guys have been making music together since 1997, so over 20 years. I want to ask, how did you guys initially meet? And of course, what's the story behind the Loose Cannons? Well, <clears throat> this is Booth Avenger speaking. Um, I was in the group prior to us becoming Loose Cannons. Um, how, to, how, to make, how to put it in a nutshell. I was, I was, in, a, I was in a group. Uh, it was four of us who were called POU. We stood for products of my environment. And at that same time, like Finn was just a, I don't want to say tag along, <laughs> but he was, right. one of the, he was just one of the little 
new guy, one of the one of the new, one of the new cool dudes that hung around us. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it did, what that turned into was him starting to rap. And you know, you know, fast forward, um, POE breaks up. One of the guys in POE, our brother Tipto, and another brother of ours, uh, Gino Boss. They keep kind of keep the POE name going and go out to um, Oakland, California, and strike a record deal with someone uh, <laughs> you was just talking to Drew down three days ago. Uh, what a yeah, three days ago on the night, man. They they were on the same level with on the label. They were on the same label with Drew down. Yeah, Drew like a big brother to us. Yeah, Drew Down is big bro to us, man. So, all, I mean, all of that, man, and we were in the midst of the Bay Area when it was just like, like one nothing hotter than the Bay Area at that time. I'm talking about from Souls of Mischief to Too Short. There was nothing hotter than the Bay Area. And, man, we, we were able to slide up in that scene and simulate ourselves and you know what I'm saying? It, it took we took everything that we learned from that situation, and we, when it was all said and done, we brought it back home. With and you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Chris Hicks, see no records. You know what I'm saying? Big Bo, man. You know what I'm saying? See no records. The loonies and look and true down. Yeah, for sure. And I gotta say, man, have you guys like when you guys were like back in the '90s when you guys first started when you were talking about Drew Down? Did you guys ever have the opportunity to actually make any joints with Drew Down? And if so, man, like where can we actually check those out? Because I, I can only imagine it right now. Your guys' style with the Drew Down style would just literally—I I, think—I don't even think a vinyl record could actually hold that, man. I think that shit will melt. <laughs> that, that's crazy, man. We actually did a joint with our brothers who. Who eventually, uh, eventually they were they were called the product, and the product had drew down on the album, and we got to be on that album, and it wasn't even us rapping; it was just the same. Yeah, we on the hook. We on the yeah, we did the hook before the we song. Were the hook, but we <laughs> were on the song, and you know what I'm saying. We always felt like we could add that to our resume. But at the same time, man, you know, uh, outside of the studio, Drew Down was still just a big bro to us, man. And, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be love for that dude, man, from us. Always. And also as well, you know, in 2012, you guys actually signed a digital distribution deal with Oakland, California-based ABB Records and 710 Digital. I was wondering, what's the story behind that deal? And, of course, how did that opportunity come to be for both of you guys? Uh, it was cool, man. Um, our brother, uh, Christopher Chipto Williams, he had a big integral part in uh, hooking that up. And the guy that uh, ran 710, he really dug it. And we had a couple of hot singles out. Uh, I think the song was like, Say Yeah or something back at the time, and it caught fire. And he caught attention to that, so we set up the um, distribution deal with him. And it made a lot of noise. We The playlist reached overseas. We appreciated everything, but... Sometimes, as you know, business doesn't go how business should go. So we had to stand up, put our big boy pants on, and take another route. You know what I mean? Sometimes on your course, you got to take a loss to actually gain something. So that was a learning experience that we just soaked up. And we were like, never again. We control our own destiny from here. And I got to say, sometimes that's the best route to go, man, owning everything 110% 110% is better than someone owning a little piece, man, because there's always going to be that one, that is all, there's always going to be that middleman in that situation that's trying to take from your plate. The best thing is, man, is just to own everything on your own plate. Yeah, being in full control as much as you can of your destiny, it be in music or you working at UPS or FedEx is um, very important to your happiness and, and, and peace of mind. And we, we found it out the hard way, but we're there now, so we appreciate the struggle. And, and that's a uh, that's, that's a great lesson, man, for any for any artist trying to come up in this business right now. Like seriously, man, like you really gotta uh, take a scope of the landscape and see what's going on. 
on. I mean, like, you got artists like Anita Baker. I mean, legend in the game. But you got artists like Anita Baker right now still fighting for money that's owed to her. Uh, music that she should have control of. It's, it's, it's my, like, seriously, man, do not be in no rush to sign with a record label if you can't get at least, as Master P taught her, if you can't get 85% of what you, what you are uh, investing into, bro, which is, which is you, don't do it. Remain in the, some, some, uh, somewhere, some, somebody somewhere is always looking for new music to hear, man. And that's, that's what we try to provide. We always try to provide, uh, 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 try to keep out there something, something new and fresh, man. You know, and, and fall in line. We ain't trying to be better than nobody. We just, you know, just want to fall in line and, and, and be a part of, And also as well, in the same year, you guys were offered another opportunity to strike a licensing deal with uh, Adam uh, Factory Music that was actually founded by Grammy Award-winning Paul Stewart. I was wondering, can you tell our listeners a bit more about that opportunity? And of course, what was it like actually just meeting Paul Stewart? Paul is an amazing, amazing guy. I'll never forget the day the call came in. I was sitting with my brother. He answered the phone, and the first words were out of his mouth were, Yo, this is Paul. I like the group. And I lost it, man. And we, we hooked up with him. Uh, they sent us a lot of tracks for um, licensing and distribution for soundtracks and commercials and everything. We did maybe six or seven hot joints. They actually sat around for a while, but they have recently resurfaced on a project that we just released, and it's available on our website right now, and it's called Paul's Playlist. So we actually came full circle and dedicated that album to Paul just for showing us love. And that's available on our website, we are lc's.live right now. Yeah, man, and um, I mean, you know, we never we never got a placement out of that deal. We didn't get a placement out of that deal, but um, it was once again, it's a great learning experience. Man, it's a great learning experience, and it's all and it's also about building relationships. And when you can build a relationship as such, you know, with a with a Grammy Award winning, you know what I'm saying, music producer, uh, music supervisor, you know what I'm saying. Paul is all of that, man. He wears many hats, and uh, for that dude to even recognize recognize us and what we were doing and give us the key to the ball the ball to be and let us record over anything that we wanted. Um it was an amazing it was an an, an amazing experience and one that we'll never take for granted because like we should, like I just said, like that dude is a Grammy Award winning uh producer and you know he he allowed us to and also as well in September 2014 you guys actually collaborated but you guys done more work than just this one project with this individual but I have to say I really love the work you guys did with um, with uh, Mr. LBZ on your soulful re uh, sorry soulful revolution record I was wondering man how did that collaboration come to be and of course what is it like working with LBZ <laughs> Um, Mr. LBZ, wow. That's, I, I got to tell him that you asked because he's not going to believe it. But um, that's our brother too, man. We we got a lot of love from him. He's actually probably the youngest brother, if I'm not mistaken. And um, he's been around us a lot. And he just sits around. He soaks up everything Luz Cannon does. He soaks up everything that he can learn. And he actually raps. So he got on the track, man, and he did a very good job. And um, that that was an old track that we did, but even to this day, it's so relevant and it is so timeless that you would not be able to tell that it has a date on it. And we appreciate him for it. I love LBZ. You ain't gonna believe you asked about it. Mr. LB, wow. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be honest, boys. I really, I really love to do my digging when it comes to interviews. Like I said, ain't no generic questions when you come on Outlaw Radio FM. I gotta respect it, man. That's awesome, brother. But that's why I said as well that you guys actually did some other amazing work with him because I noticed he's scattered out through your, throughout your projects. But I really love the Soulful Revolution record, so I figured, you know what I mean. I, you guys have such a lengthy career within the music industry. I can't sit here all day and talk about everything. So I figured talk about one of my favorite projects that you guys did and also bring up another phenomenal individual at the same time. So combine two questions in one. Mm. Soulful Revolution was our first official project. That was the first project that we that, that me and Finn did that we actually, you know what I'm saying, released to the masses. And it was an accumulation of just us being together from 1997 up to that time. Like, all of those songs, man, weren't, weren't fresh songs. A lot of those songs were songs that we had probably recorded anywhere from five to ten years earlier. And so there's never, there's never been a chemistry issue with us. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, give it to us, let us sit with it, and I guarantee you what we're going to bring you back is going to at least be listen worthy. And that's all we were thinking about when we did Soul for Revolution, was we want, we just want to make this listen worthy. And it, 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 it grew, and it, it grew, and we made Soul Patrol, and then, I don't, okay, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to skip over questions that you might ask, but Soul for Revolution, man, that's our baby, and man, that's, that's, that was us in a nutshell out the gate. And also as well, man, you guys actually had the opportunity to do work with legendary producer Rod K.P. Kilpatrick, where he actually produced your single, Say Yeah, man, how did yourself and Rod actually get connected, and of course, what was it like working with him? Rod is dope. Rod, um, it's funny because Rod actually found us. And we didn't find out till later that we had a prior connection because it turns out he was the producer that produced the track that actually got our brothers, the product, their initial deal. We had no clue about that until we started conversating and found out we all knew each other. So Rod, he found us on, I forget what website it was, and he started digging the music. Reverb, <laughs> Reverb Nation. He found us on Reverb Nation. And we started building a relationship with Rod, and he became like a big brother to us, so much so that he is, even to this day, on the new project and is a very integral part of what we have going on. And I gotta say as well, man. Like he did, a, he's a, one of the more, one of the biggest producers actually out there as well. Like he actually did some phenomenal work with East Coast with other East Coast hip hop artists as well. Oh yeah, uh, Red Man, Keith Murray, Eric Sermon. He was a member of the whole Death Squad. He was a member of the of the Death Squad. Uh, production family, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, he's he's around a lot of big names, man. Like like, you know, when we met Rob, bro, we didn't you know, like like my brother said, he got our other brother, he did the demo for our other brother that got them their record deal on C Note Flash Ruthless Records and and and, and, I, and it just came it just came full circle, man, and, and we we will always be indebted. And also as well, another phenomenal project that really caught my eye, and I have to say I absolutely love this project as well because it's very unique. You don't really see a lot of hip-hop artists nowadays doing this, but you guys actually have a mixtape called Digging Through the Crates where you actually took 18 different hip-hop and R&B tracks and made them your own. Can you tell us, our listeners, a bit more about the creative process that that mixtape took? Because like right then and there, you know what I mean, 18 hip hop and R and B songs and by the by the sounds of it, crates, you guys were using vinyls, which isn't an easy process. If you can or tell our listeners a bit more about that unique album. Um, digging through the crates came across because we were done with the 
album, um, the marquee. We were done with the album, but we were not ready to put it out yet because when it comes to us, we think timing is everything, so the timing wasn't right, but we also wanted to have something out in the streets. So we were like, instead of putting out a new project like that, let's try something different and explore the mixtape avenue. And the first song that we did, if I'm not mistaken, was um, Kanye and Jay-Z. Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but that was the first song that we did on that album. And oh, it grew. Wow. Yeah. Uh, the wow. No, it grew from there. Like one song turned into two, two turned into three. Before we knew it, I actually think we were plus 18. But we had to end up cutting some stuff to make it, you know, so people wouldn't get bored of the listen. And as well as the 18 songs, we also did 18 individual um, lyrics videos and gif videos to accompany the record. So you have the 18 songs on the track, and you also have videos as well to go along with it. So that was a very fun record to make. One of my favorites. Yeah, one of my favorite songs. And I got to say as well, uh, guys, right after this uh, interview, I'm actually going to be playing one of one of the songs. I mean, I had this song on the station's rotation for quite some time, but for individuals that are just tuning in for the first time, I'm going to be spinning "Rap Star." Man, I love, I, I love that joint. And I've been I've been telling individuals this before you guys even got on the phone. So this song, in my personal opinion, is probably one of the best new age hip hop songs I personally ever heard so far in the past decade. Ask you, man, pertaining to rap star, like, because that's actually from uh, digging through the crates. What song did you guys actually uh, sample for actually rap star? That is, what's the, what's his name? That Logic. That's that's Logic. That that's a that's a track that we got from Logic. But, um, the name of the track slips my mind right now, but um, that is a Logic track that that we took, and um, I think it's actually an extended version to it, but we just shortened it up. And uh, changed it up a little bit and made it sweet and made it loose like we always do. And Bootha, I actually got a question for you, man, because I was looking on your um, I was looking on your guys's um, uh, site there where you guys sell all your music, and I read a little little description on one of your joints. But on February twenty eighth of twenty twenty one, you actually dropped a song that you actually been holding on to for the last four years, titled "What You Need." I really want to know, man, what actually made you decide to drop that song after holding on to it for four plus years? Oh, uh, man, you know, it was, it was the season, which was uh, Black History Month. Um, when I did it four years ago, I got it from, <clears throat> I got the track from an up and coming producer from around here named Soul Food, man. And I'm telling you, guys, he is the next coming of Dilla or Ninth Wonder. I'm, I truly mean this. I, I stamp this when I say it. But anyway, man, uh, my brother sent me to see, you know, just a boatload of tracks, and I got to that one. And it was probably, when I did it four years ago, it was probably around the same time, you know, around February-ish, you know, Black History Month, man, and I just, when I, when I heard it, um, if I hear something off the bat, man, and I'm into it within the first 120 seconds with the students, like, I'm all in, you know, pretty much. And when I heard it, man, the first two minutes of that song, bro, I was, I probably had already written, like, eight bars. And, and from there, you know, I was just like, yeah, let's go. And I just been holding on to it, and, you know, it's just sometimes, you know, it's all about time. It really is, man. It's just about time. And uh, when I released it, you know, a couple of weeks ago, man, that's what there was. It was just about time. I didn't even really care who heard it. I just put it out. And also, 
also as well on February 14th of this year, so right on Valentine's Day, you both released the album titled The Art of Seduction. What I gotta say is a phenomenal name for a Valentine's Day record that drops. You know what I mean? But either way, can you tell our listeners a bit more about that phenomenal project? And of course, where can we actually buy or stream ourselves a copy today if we haven't already peeped The Art of Seduction? Yeah, Art of Seduction is um is actually part two to a Valentine series that we started last year. The first record was uh, Breakups and Makeup, and people received that pretty well. And we wanted to do another one, but we wanted to go bigger and better and more seductive. So that's where the title came from. And it's been received well, man. Like, people have really enjoyed the songs off of it. Uh, we have a couple of singles off of that record floating around now on different charts as well. And it's available on wearelcs.live, wearelcs.live, as well as all of our music. We encourage you guys to go enjoy, purchase, download, subscribe to the website so you can keep up with us, and let's rock out. And also, I was wondering as well, do you guys happen to have any hard copies available? Because we, because here at Outlaw Radio FM, we, we have some new age listeners. We also have old school listeners that really do still love that like hard copy format. Do you guys have any hard copies of any of your projects? And if so, how can we go about actually snagging ourselves some copies? Uh, yes. If you want hard copies, just hit us up on the website, which is once again, we are the letter R. LCS, the letters LCS uh, dot live. We are LCS dot live. And just, you know what I'm saying, shoot us, shoot us something, shoot us a message via the website. And if, if, if it's hard copies that you want, then it's hard copies that, you, that we'll get you. And we're also, we're also in the, uh, in the works of, of, of uh, putting together some, some vinyl copies, which will go to not just, you know, they won't go to everybody, but they will be available for everybody. So we're going to we're gonna make these, these packages with the vinyl, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make those some special, special packages that we send out to folks, and uh, including yourself, brother. So, yeah, man, that's... Um, yeah, hard copies are on deck. Just, just let us know what you want. Let, let, let us know what you prefer. Hey, man, most definitely. I actually just bought myself after digging for years to find a nice vinyl player. So I just found a, I just found a vinyl player, man. I, I can assure you, I'm most definitely going to enjoy your record on vinyl. I can't promise my if my neighbors will, but at the end of the day, <laughs> you know what I mean? They can't control the dial, so they're going to have to enjoy whatever I play. They'll convert. They'll, they'll convert eventually. Just pump up the volume. Hey, man, you already know. It, it, just, like, just like the radio, man, you know what I mean? I, every now and then, you got to play the same song over and over again for people to be like, you know what, it's catchy. So hopefully, if not, you know, it is what it is. They, they'll they enjoy it whether they like it or not. Let's just put it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's all we, that's all we ask, man. That's all, just give us a listen. That's all we ask. But Bootha, Sin, I gotta ask you guys, man, what is next for the Loose Cannons, man? Because you guys, like I said, and I'm, I don't even want to gas you guys up. I just want to f- actually say, you guys are doing some phenomenal things for hip hop, man. You are individuals that are actually really keeping the hip hop culture alive, man. There's way, excuse my language, but there's way too much bullshit nowadays when it comes to the music industry. But you guys keep it 110 percent day in and day out, man. So I have to ask you both, what is next for the legendary group Loose Cannons? I'll let my brother size it up, man. Go ahead, brother. Um, so back on um, back in twelve nineteen, we released the Marquee. Um, it got some, you know, get, it got nice nice reviews. It got love. It was it was received well. But at the end of the day, we still weren't really satisfied with it. So we said, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do the marquee, kind of how we were doing Soul for Revolution and Soul Patrol, which was we was trying to make it a, you know, something close to a trilogy. Well, us not being 100% satisfied with um, the marquee, we said, you know what, let's do, let's do it over. Let's do it again. 
and let's call it the encore edition. <clears throat> Meaning that we're coming back to do this for you again. But this go around, it's not even going to sound the same. It's going to feel the same, but it's not going to sound the same. Even the songs that you think you know, you don't know. Because that's what we did. We went, over the last two weeks, we went, we recorded the whole record. You know what I'm saying? Just, just because of equipment upgrade. Uh, being the mic. We upgraded the mic, so we was just like, man, it's only right that we go back and we record this whole joint. So we did that in two weeks. In a two week span. And that's the next project, the, the, the Marquee Encore Edition. And we're, we're coming back to give it to you all over again, but this time we're going to give it to you better than what we gave it to you the first time. And the first single is already out, which is called Shade. Um, the video is out. Um, and like I said, man, that that the video alone is being well received, you know, along with the song. And uh, hey, man, that's, that's where we at right now. It's, you know, yeah, we ask you guys to go to um, go to YouTube, type in Loose Cannons Shades, check out the video, give a thumbs up, tell us what you think in the comments, and continue to support hip hop. Continue to support yourself. Show love to everybody. And we thank each and every one of y'all from a humble place in our hearts, man. It's been a joy and a pleasure. And the Marquee the, uh, uh, Encore Edition is coming out 4 3 21. So we got a couple of weeks before we're right back at it, and the party's going to start all over again, you guys. Hey, man, it most definitely sounds like 2021 is the year of the Loose Cannons, man. And I'm most definitely looking forward to, you know what I mean, just your guys' newest projects. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. We can't wait to give it to you, man. Hey, man, if you guys send it, we here at Outlaw Radio FM is most definitely going to spin it. Thank you, man. That's, 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 that's the appreciation part of, of the game that a lot of artists need to recognize, especially in, in hip-hop, because when you get love, man, especially from... It's, it's one thing to get love from the people. But when you get love from DJs, man, who will spin your music just because on the strength that they love it, they mean, that's, that's, you can't undervalue that. Because everyone is not even privy to that type of love, man. So, man, we appreciate you, brother. We, we, we love that you, um, that you, that you sought us out, man, and, and decided to, and, and, and put us on your platform, brother, and we, you know what I'm saying, we're forever grateful to you for that. And also, guys, this is the time quickly, right before I wrap things up, that I give a chance for the individuals that slide into the radio station airwaves, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but of course, your social media handles, that way our listeners can stay updated on everything Bootha, SynQ, and the Loose Cannons, if they're not already doing so. Uh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, check us out, like we said, on the website. We are, the letter R, LCS.live. That's the main place that we want you guys to visit. But also, on Facebook, you can get at us anytime. SynQ Clarence Tatum. I'm available to talk to the fans anytime, as well as my brother. So the website and the Facebook page are the most immediate ways to get in touch with me right now. Yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, just follow up on that. Yeah, the website, um, our Instagram, our IG is, you know, Loose Cannons with an S, uh, Loose Cannons LCS, um, at Booth Van Vos, at St. Clarence Tatum, um, we are LCS Live. You know that's <clears throat> like my brother stated. That, that's really what we want you to, to um, come and, and, and interact with us. You know that's what we we'll, that's what we most be appreciative. But hey, man, you know wherever you come and get in contact with us, that's that's love, and we definitely appreciate. 
But I gotta say, first and foremost, guys, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy evening and just coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM. It was an honor and most definitely a privilege to welcome you two legendary, talented individuals on my radio station, man. I appreciate you guys, and I'm hoping down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. And once again, man, we appreciate you for letting us invade your space, and we are forever, uh, we are forever grateful for that. Look, man, ninety-seven point seven L R Radio is what that is. The movie's forever indebted to you guys, Canada. Y'all are amazing, bro. You are amazing. Happy birthday to you. Enjoy your night. Thank you for having us. And any time you call on Loose Cannons, we will be there for you. Hey, man, I appreciate you guys for real, and thank you so much for the birthday wishes, man, you know. I couldn't picture doing my birthday any any other way, man. I love doing what I do, and so I knew I had to do what I love to do for my birthday, because after all, it wouldn't be a birthday without doing what you love to do. I love it, man. Hey, man, most definitely, guys, you have yourselves a wonderful night, and don't worry, Outlaw Radio most definitely will keep them loose cannon spinning. Outlaw Radio, loose cannon signing out. Thank you, guys. You're most certainly welcome, guys. Have yourself a wonderful night. You too, brother. Peace.